Here's the veal and joining us tonight, Mark Bussey, Paul Doroshenko and Lee Chekstad. Let's get right on it. Uh, foreign driver's licenses, uh, mostly uh, Chinese people in Richmond uh, with the Chinese license, uh, being pulled over by the RCMP, ticketed 267 bucks and having their car impounded. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it's very disturbing to me because I have to tell you, if you've got a Lithuanian driver's license or an Iranian driver's license, there's also no reciprocity agreement. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they're not doing that to you. And I, I think the reason that they're doing it, I mean, if you want to get to the underlying reason, is that there has been some people who've been pulled over with phony driver's licenses. Well, weren't they selling driver's licenses? Fake? Wasn't that, isn't that, a, wasn't that Richmond? Well, I think you can probably get a fairly high-quality Chinese driver's why license just buying in China. Good, why are they just buying good uh, driver's licenses, fake driver's licenses here now anyway? Because they don't have to take no, the test. No, what it. happens is they're pulled over, they've got a Chinese driver's license yeah. that is, you know, in entirely likely that it's a valid driver's license and if you're a visitor or a tourist you can drive with a foreign driver's license you're entitled to but now the RCMP in Richmond have decided that if you're pulled over with a Chinese well, no, license... Well, no, 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 the courts have backed them up. The courts well, have... Oh, no, uh, no, right? no, hang on, hang on. I mean, the what, courts are you, a lawyer? Have back... <laughs> <laughs> courts have backed them up. Maybe. So somebody disputes their ticket, right? right? And they show up and they don't know what the police officer is going to argue so they're not necessarily prepared for it or they don't have a lawyer and they don't understand what they need to to demonstrate for the court. I mean, for the, for the RCMP to say that that's, you know, blanket, the courts have backed them up, uh, you know, that's really misleading. But I also think there's a big problem in the sense that ICBC has made different rules, yeah. and those rules aren't being they communicated made well. So those are the rules. They're interpreting are the, the Motor Vehicle those, Act. But in Richmond a way. have interpreted the rules in a different way. So this is the RCMP, and they've decided to do it on their own. And they're saying that the only reason they're doing it on their own this way is because they can't confirm that these are valid Chinese valid driver's licenses. But really, like, do you, uh, do they have any way to check if your uh, Uzbek driver's license is uh, is valid? You know, they're not going to do this. To, yeah, exactly. I, 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 you know, I'm I'm never one to disagree with my colleague, Mr. Doroshenko, <laughs> but esteemed, the key learned. esteemed, learned. Uh, but uh, the key thing that you just said was, this is the RCMP. ICBC is an insurance company. Now, ICBC the, is the, responsible for licensing yes, drivers in BC. The RCMP, the superintendent of motor vehicles, and ICBC are, are the are the authority, though. They're, this, they are the police. They're deciding what the law is, and when it goes to court, it's all sorted out. Oh, I, well, I, I wouldn't want the police understand. to decide what the I'll law tell you, is. <laughs> if you're, if they you're don't. They over, only enforce it. Uh, if you're pulled you over as a tourist in B.C. and yep. you get a ticket, ICBC will then assign you a driver's license number in B.C. and start a driver's abstract for you. Right. If you're pulled over again at some later date and you get another ticket, they assume that you live here. And then they issue you an indefinite driving prohibition that you've got to try and somehow reverse. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's a problem. And the problem arises because we've got people from all over the world yep. who come to B.C. Sometimes they live here for two months and sometimes they go away. You're entitled to do that. You know, do you have to get a B.C. driver's license? Then you have to relinquish the driver's license you've got. Well, if you spend nine months of the year in China and three months of the year, two months of the year in B.C., shouldn't you be entitled to use your your Chinese you should, driver's license and you know, don't you nope. suspect that they've kind of put in this blanket reaction for a few people who are causing them problems people they know who are living here who continue to say oh no I'm just a visitor I'm just a visitor or I don't speak English and I'm just a visitor this is and they've just kind of had enough legislative gap yeah. blame our provincial government they got to get out there and yep. figure this one out yeah, all right speaking of government I agree with Nice to have you guys getting along. CBC, 657 layoffs over two years. No competing with private broadcasters for sporting events. Since we fund the CBC, are you happy with their fiscal restraint? Suck it up, princess. <laughs> I mean, media is a tough... It's a, not you. Not you. Oh. It's a you tough, it's a tough gig, You're no princess. for sure. <laughs> I love the CBC. I'm totally a CBC loyalist. I, it make, I'm proud as a Canadian we have CBC. But CBC is going to... away. The Conservatives don't like it. They've never liked it. They've wanted to be rid of it. They look at it as a bunch of so lefty, suck it up. So make it work. Singing kumbaya there and spending. well, they're tired of paying for it and having them. Well, and, dump there's, and there's now advertising on CBC Radio. You know, I have to listen to those. I know. You have GD to worry about the, the content, though. That ultimately, all those jobs are going to mean fewer people filling more time. Huge. So where are those cuts it's going so, to happen? It's so tight in the media right now. You guys know that. They don't have money to send reporters out for all sorts of things. Uh, it's a competitive market, and CBC is competing. They're financed by our tax money to mm -hmm. compete with the other uh, broadcasters. Yeah, I've and you lose CBC. Hockey Night in Canada, and there, or you lose And the we hockey lost George Trump and up and up and up and snuffle up again. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I would really hate to see, I'd really hate to see CBC become, you know, like PBS. You know, as much as I enjoy, funded, you know, that is telethon. so sad. When it is, but you know what? I have to say, I mean, 
for a long time, you know, working in the media, you'd show up to a story and there'd be two of you, yep. a cameraman and a reporter, and CBC would have, well, four for English and three for yeah. French. And yeah. then there's radio and TV there yeah. as well. So and they they have pared that down. They're now on par with the rest of us, which is... You know, Welcome to the club. CBC feels person more fair, but shows up in my office and it's usually just a cameraman there yeah. with a list of questions. Yeah, now it's... it's it's they, they operate more like we do, but it's certainly different for them. And I just wonder, because they do some really great long-form journalism yes. that the rest of us don't have the opportunity yes. or money to do. That's so true. that yeah. might be a disadvantage for Canadians. Yep. Disadvantage to, for Canadians and maybe an advantage for the Conservative Party because they won't be investigated by the CBC. Yes, you are right. Let's move to France because your boss, uh, for a lot of people, can no longer uh, expect you to answer emails or texts or anything after hours. And these are folks who uh, work 35-hour weeks and get a minimum of five weeks vacation a year. Talk to an employer. I'll tell you. From my perspective as an employer, I need to call my employees sometimes after hours. It's a competitive market. I sure am glad I don't live in France because what happens if somebody gets arrested after hours and I have to call one of the lawyers who works with me? This is for public service employees. No, so it's, a, is, yeah, but it's this one is, million people. This is, this, is a, this is a big of, discussion oh, yeah. in Europe that they've had for a while about people saying, well, now that we're connected with smartphones and this, we shouldn't have to be uh, on call all the time. I don't think it's that big of a problem. Uh, it might be a bigger problem than American companies because, I, the, you know, there is generally an expectation that you are an employee. Well, what about, employee what the, about the Asian companies where people, like, die at work because they've been there for 82 hours? Yeah, that's an extreme. I, I, I wish I had a time machine. I really do. Because, you know, let's check back with France's economy in, in 10 years and let's check and let's check ours and see who's recovered. It's a, it's a, it really goes to a deeper cultural, fundamental cultural work ethic, and I'm, I'm okay with ours. Well, I mean, I so we overdo it. We overdo it. You're the boss. And I work harder than, and I work as harder, harder than any of my staff. Do you? Yeah, you bet. What, tell me about, show me a boss who doesn't. Yeah, you've got to you've got to make sure that you've got the work every day. You've got to make sure that your employees are are covered. You but I also think there's a productivity work. issue here. These people want to work nine to five, but I think there are other schedules that work for people. It's about how much work you're getting done, not exactly the hours you are working. I know lots of people who don't start work till, or oh, they'll work from five to seven in the morning. They'll be gone till noon, and then they'll put some time in. A little bit later, I think this is a really restrictive competitive, mar it's competitive like, market economy. You it's know, like you it's like an entire country is being run by run by a union. Mm -hmm. it, it's what it's like. You know, unions where you work four hours, you get minimum eight. That kind of mentality. A bad union. It is full, yeah, bad yeah. union. Sorry. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unions are a good idea theoretically. And there's many good ones, but when it goes over to the other side, it gets to the extreme. Yeah, it's, well, it's a dangerous thing, though. I mean, it's a slippery slope because uh, yep. you can employers can really take advantage of employees uh, in certain situations. I know situations. I do. Well, so let's let me ask this because well, well, you, basically it's if you're a business owner, not just a boss, but if you're the business <clears throat> yep. owner, which yep. you both yeah, are, know. right? That's I think that's where the difference lies: owner versus just a boss. Do your employees know, and I'm assuming they do, that you expect to be able to reach them after hours? Yeah, and How they're accustomed to it. Without a doubt. And do you then, sort of on their regular shift, know that they might leave half an hour early? You betcha. Because they I spent send two them hours away. Over. I've sent when my you staff. Can. I've, yeah, let's, you guys are going to the spa. Yeah. Let's go get a foot Absolutely. massage. Absolutely. I mean, are you sure. kidding? Look, uh, you know, if I find that my uh, employees are on Facebook for a few minutes or yep. TMZ or whatever, you don't you freak know, out? I don't freak no. out. They're working for me, and they work hard, and they're you devoted. You try to employ millennials. The and job. You try to employ millennials and, and play that game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, and that's the other thing that's different, right? Is the work-life balance. Yeah. I don't know what it's you guys. To them. But it didn't mm. exist nope. when I started in this business. I derive balance? I derive reward and and pleasure from working like a dog, and uh, a 25-year-old doesn't. Yeah, uh, absolutely. That's a, that's absolutely. a broad stroke okay. generalization. No, but it's, but it's generally it's generally true. <laughs> I, I like working. I don't expect my staff to be working all the time with the same you know dedication that I do. But I do expect them when I need them uh, to do the job that they've got to do. And nobody complains about it. Generally speaking, not, not to his face. <laughs> well, yeah. I, yeah sometimes, on, sometimes on I stand out the door to listen, but uh, yeah, no. I mean, for the most part, I think everybody is pretty happy. I, I you know, I, I have to say, I derive pleasure also from my employees enjoying their workplace. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yep. yeah. All right, uh, we're out of time, but uh, Colbert for Letterman, good choice, yes or no? My gut says no. Yes or no? My gut says no. Yeah. My gut says it's time for a change in general with like, like comedy. I just think he's... Yeah. Wow, he's Stephen so, Colbert, you so heard different. it here. They don't like you. Yeah, I, <laughs> no, I love I Colbert. He's a great guy. I've met him. I've been in, his, I've been in the yeah. studio. I've he's met not him. Enough of a friend guy. of mine's a producer. Uh, but the Colbert the person that I met, the twitchy, nervous, aloof individual who isn't the character, I don't think I want to watch him interview people not in that 
Well, we're going to we're 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 go. Coming up on Unfiltered, is there an anti-resource bias in Metro Vancouver? The author of a new report believes there is. His list of seven myths coming up. Got to stick around for that.